Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. Today we'll discuss the explanation of Ustaz Amin Asir Nislahi vis-a-vis the incident of Moses and Khizr which is mentioned in Surah Kahf. Uh, this incident actually has very, very important uh, offshoots and uh, some uh, underlying wisdom that is very essential for us to understand a lot of things that go on in this universe and this world which we are unable to understand, which we think are probably unjust, which we think is something which is of a great uh, oppression that is being uh, meted out perhaps by the Almighty. And then uh, we realize that there is some good hidden in it and uh, we often uh, get entangled with the apparent and uh, lose sight of what is actually in uh, in the inner aspect of some incident. So this incident of Moses and Khizr, I'm just going to read out its translation first before you and then present to you the explanation offered by Ustaz Amin Aswan Islahi in his Tafsir of Surah Kahf and uh, it has tremendous significance uh, vis-a-vis the times that we are living in today in which all around us this uh, uh, pandemic is going on and uh, really taking its toll on our mental, physical, emotional health. And uh, I think that these verses of Surah Kahaf provide tremendous uh, insight and help uh, vis-a-vis present times. So the translation uh, is actually from Surah 65, from verse 65 to verse 82. Uh, just going to read it out to you. It says, so they found there a servant from among our servants whom we had specially blessed and had bestowed on him a special time of knowledge from ourselves. Of course, uh, referring to Khizr. So Moses and his companion were traveling along when they met Khizr. And this is how the opening verse describes their meeting. So Moses requested him, If you allow me, I'll be your companion on the condition that you teach me a little also from the knowledge given to you. He replied, You will not be able to be patient along with me. And how at all can you be patient at what is beyond your sphere of knowledge? Moses said, God willing, you will find me patient and I will not disobey you in any matter. So as they embarked upon this journey, Moses actually was warned by Khizr. He said that, well, you can come along with me, but when you see a number of things that I'll do, you will not be able to remain silent and patient and uh, something which is beyond your grasp of knowledge. How at all can you remain silent? But Moses still s- insisted that he will not uh, be disobedient to him. So he requested him to take him along. And so it happened that Khizr took him along. And then the story goes on from here. He said, which of course is Khizr, uh, then if you have to accompany me, do not ask me about anything until I mention it to you myself. At last, both of them set off until when at one place they boarded a ship. That person, Khizr of course, made a hole in it. Moses said, You have made a hole in it that you may drown all the people of the ship. This is a very strange thing that you have done. He replied, Did did I not say to you that you will not be able to be patient with me? Moses said, Do not hold me accountable for what I forgot. And please do not be very stern with me in my matter. So, of course, this was something which really provoked Moses when he saw that Khizr by the way, I need to also clarify that the word Khizr, of course, is not mentioned in the Quran. And we, from our external historical narratives, we know that the person who is being described here or discussed here is uh, generally known as Khizr. So we are relying on those external reports uh, to name him. So in this particular uh, first part of the incident, Moses, of course, is very alarmed and he's very taken aback when he saw Khizr salam making a hole in the ship, which of course would mean that that ship is going to drown. And Moses said that, uh, that Khizr, you have done something which is very terrible and unbefitting of you. And again, again, Khizr reminded him and said that, did I not tell you that you'll not be able to re- remain patient with me? So Moses said that he forgot and please don't uh, hold me accountable for something which I forgot. So let's move on to the next part. Then both set off. Until when they met a boy on the way, he killed that boy. So Khizr killed that boy. Moses said, you have slain an innocent person even though he has not slain anyone. This is a very terrible thing that you have done. He said, did I not say to you that you will not be able to be patient along with me? Moses said, if after this I ask you something, you may not keep me with you. You would have reached an excuse from me. So again, when he saw that uh, Khizr had made a hole in a 
in a in a ship. Uh, or, or sorry, the, the next part was that he had killed a boy. It was something which uh, really, really uh, angered Moses because, of course, killing is something which no one can uh, bear. And he said that you've killed an innocent person without any justification. And again, Khizr actually reprimanded Moses and said that, did I uh, tell you that you'll not be able to be patient with me? And then Moses actually replied, okay, if after now on I still bother you, then you have, uh, you can do whatever you like and I'll not stop you and I'll not insist going along with you. So now the third part. At this both journeyed ahead until when they reached the inhabitants of a city, they asked their people to provide food, but they refused their hospitality. Uh, then they saw a wall there was that, that was about to fall. So he restored it, Khizr restored it. Moses said, if you wanted, you could have asked for some compensation for it. He replied, now this is parting of ways between you and me. I will now tell you the reality behind the acts on which you have not been able to exercise patience. So ultimately, we find Khizr giving up and saying, okay, on all these three occasions, you were not able to control yourself. You could not hold back yourself and you interrupted on every single thing that I did. And uh, remember that I told you that you'll not interrupt me or not say anything to me until I, of my own accord, speak to you. But on all these three occasions, you could not uh, follow what we had initially agreed upon. So now what Khizr is going to do, he is going to reveal the wisdom behind all these three acts. And look how he does so in the language of the Quran, of course, the translation. So he says, in the case of the ship, it belonged to some poor people who would earn their living in the sea. So I intended to make it defective because they, were, because they lived a king ahead who was snatching every ship. So you see, the first point of wisdom, or the first thing is that he seemingly, he actually uh, made that ship defective so that the king who was snatching away these ships, he would leave alone this ship uh, because it, is, uh, it had become defective. And this is the reason uh, Khizr said that he had made this uh, hole in the ship. And then he says, as for the boy, both his parents were people of faith. So we, have, we fear that after growing up, he may not harass them because of his rebelliousness and disbelief. Hence, we wanted that their Lord bless them with a child in his place who is purer and more affectionate than him. So again, now he is underlying the wisdom behind killing the child or a boy. And he says that he was, his parents were people of faith and this person would end up growing into a rebellious and a disbelieving person and cause nuisance to his parents. So he took away that child from him. And of course, it's said that... Uh, uh, he would wanted the Lord to give him a better substitute for this child. And this is why he actually killed that boy. And then he offers the, the explanation of the third part. He says, And the matter of the wall was that it belonged to two orphans of the city. Beneath it was their treasure and their father was a pious person. It was he who had buried the treasure. Of course, this is the understood part. So your Lord wanted that they reach maturity and take out their treasure themselves. This happened because of your God's grace. And all this that I did was not out of my intention, signaling the fact of whatever he did was at the behest of the Almighty. This is the reality behind the acts on which you have not been able to show patience. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that regarding this third act, he again said that the reason that he actually restored that wall and did not demand any hospitality from these people is that below that wall, was a treasure which, was, which belonged to two orphans who were yet immature, who were young. And their father had hidden that treasure behind, beneath that wall. And if that wall had fallen down, the treasure would have been exposed and people would have looted it. So he said that he wanted to restore that wall so that the treasure could remain hidden and they could have that treasure once they grew up. So this is uh, the basic incident which is mentioned in the Quran. Now, Ustaz Amin Islahi has taken up all these three parts of the incident and then said that look how we can see beyond the sources and beyond the resources of things that seemingly go on uh, in front of our eyes. So he says that as far as the very first uh, uh, thing is concerned that uh, then when, when, they, when they had set off they saw that the first thing that he did was that he actually made a ship defective. 
And he says that this is a lesson for poor people to learn that if God is afflicting some calamity on them, they should remain patient and steadfast because ultimately there is something good hidden for them. Just as if he had made that ship defective, it was because that the king who was going to snatch that ship, when, they, when he would see this defective ship, he would not snatch it away from them. And so therefore it was some wisdom which apparently seemed to be injustice. Apparently, when the hole was made, it was as if it was something very bad. But that hole actually was a guarantee that the ship would not be taken away by that pirate king. So, we can, the first lesson which Ustaz says that we must draw is that people who are less privileged, people who are earning their living in a very, very hand-to-mouth way, if some calamity comes across them, they must see and they must remember that there might be something even greater hidden for them, which at the moment they might not realize. And then the second thing was that he had killed the boy. And the explanation offered was that that boy was to, would have become rebellious and uh, dis, a disbeliever and he would have caused great nuisance for his parents. He was taken away and in, that, in his place, the Almighty was uh, beseeched to grant him a fresh uh, child uh, in, in his place. And again, you see that the hikmah or the wisdom here is believers who are struck with the calamity. Remember, the words are that the parents of that boy were people of faith. They were practicing people. They were pious people. They were God-fearing people. So they were st when they are struck with such a calamity, the lesson that we draw is then there is something which is hidden, which at the moment we might not have access to. So it would look as if the Almighty has taken away a very dear child from us, whereas He wanted to bless us with some, with some, someone other than Him, which who would be a much better person. And this was like a trial for them to remain patient and to trust God. And then the third uh, part of the incident in which we see that He actually restored a wall which was about to fall. The Ustaz Aminas and Islai says that here we should realize that the respite which at time at times God gives to evil people, then this should not be taken to mean that God is actually doing something in their favor because at times the purpose is to do something else and the apparent thing which occurs to our eyes, which comes before our eyes, is if at something unjust or something oppressive has happened, as is the case that he could have uh, uh, demanded compensation uh, for what he had done. But these, these were the people who had refused his hospitality, did not pay for that, their hospitality. And he could have asked for them, for them to give them some compensation. So the incident drawn from this third part is that at times when evil is flourishing, uh, in the wake of that uh, flourishing of evil, the Almighty has something else which is hidden and which he would like to reveal at his proper time. So all these three parts of the incident of Moses and Khidr tell us that we must not make ourselves slaves to what we see. And today in this environment when we are living in, a, in, a, in an era which is unprecedented, in which this pandemic has played havoc with our lives, in which we are actually experiencing an entirely new sort of uh, life routine, in which people are being killed in, in large numbers, in which people are being infected and growing, going sick as well. So we have to realize that there is something which is hidden behind it, which at the moment we might not see uh, in our favor. But later on, when we will look back, uh, we will find out that there, is, there was something good. And at times, uh, this would not even occur. We would not get a chance to look back. And, but as I said, that these were the three incidents in which the Almighty actually lifted the veil and told uh, us through, uh, through Khizr alayhi salam that what was going to happen what is actually happening has a lot of uh, apparent, it might be a, a, a something which is causing consternation to us, but it has a lot of wisdom behind it. So it may well be that whatever, whatever is happening today is something which is really, really upsetting us. But who knows that this is like resetting our life routines. We'll come out better and stronger, closer to one another, more reflective of what we are doing, analyzing our priorities in life, and being more kind and compassionate to people around us and also being more hygienically clean. So all these are the positives that we can draw and it may well be that once this uh, nasty thing has passed, we might look back and see that how God actually upset us for some 
part of the year and then he gave us something which we could not, never have imagined and we were actually blessed with something very new. So this incident of Moses and Khidr has a very important message for us that we must trust God in whatever is happening because things happen for the good. I would urge my viewers to pick up Surah Kahf uh, Tafsir which is in the fourth volume of Ustaz Amin Asin Islahi Tadabbar Quran and to go through it if they can because he has of course uh, gone into more details. I have just referred to some of them so that uh, they can instigate your interest and they can inspire you to perhaps uh, have a deeper look at these verses of Surah Kahf. Akulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisaril muslimina wal muslimat.